Finally, Tim, uh, what three tips you have for job seekers in, in terms of elevating their job search? As we have talked about tailoring resumes, networking, uh, what other things do you think they can do to find their dream job? So one of them you know, that I think is huge that's so underutilized is networking like on LinkedIn or anywhere else. Facebook could be wherever, you know, you know, anywhere you can find somebody within the organization that has a connection with you in some way. Maybe you guys went to the same school. Maybe you live in the same city. Maybe your kids go to school together. I don't care what it is. But find a connection and get somebody to be your champion on the inside. Most positions are filled not because somebody applied to the job. Mm -hmm. They're filled because somebody's networked with somebody. One of the things that hiring managers love to do is to find a candidate on their own through whatever reason, right? Could be networking, could be someone just got gave to them. They love going down to the HR office and saying, hey, I found somebody for the job, right? Because in their minds, they're thinking, I'm doing your job for you. There's a little yeah. psychology there. Um, but they love doing that. And so for me, what I find so often is I, I talk to people and they're like, I've applied to 75 jobs and I'm not hearing back. And I'm like, out of those 75 jobs, how many times did you network with somebody in the company mm -hmm. and ask them to carry your resume down to the, to the hiring manager or down to the, to the applicant, you know, to the, um, to the recruiter, to the HR yeah. office. And so often it's never, mm -hmm. and I'm like, spend more time, less time applying to jobs, spend more time networking into the companies where the job that you want is yeah. and, and find the person who actually has that job because people love having, having that, right? Um, and then the other thing I think that we, we underutilize is our own personal networks and letting people know. What I find also is that when someone loses a job, they almost like wanna hide it. Like I have a, an example, I have a, a person that I know and I won't say where, but they were actually out of a job for one year. And I didn't actually find out they were out of a job until they found the next job. So they were out of a job for a year and never oh. told me and I, and I actually saw this person like quite a bit, like on a weekly basis, I would see them and they played like they were still employed. And, and at the end of that, when they finally said, oh, I took this new job and then I heard the whole story, I'm like, why didn't you ever tell me? Yeah. And to them, they were embarrassed that they didn't have a job. But I'm like, but understand that's how you find a job is by leveraging your network. And it's a question I ask a lot. I have a, people reach out to me and say, hey, can you help me, you know, find my next job? And I'll say, can I share this with my network? And it's about 50-50. Half will say, oh, yeah, please do that. And the other half will say, well, I would rather you not. I'm trying not to make this public. And I'm no, again, I don't understand that, you know, from that standpoint. I think the other the third tip I would say is for people is to, to be patient. Um, enjoy, enjoy the time you're out of work. Yeah. For, I mean, since we're 18, 20, 22 years old until the time basically we retire, we're going to be working and I've been out of jobs, right? Like I've, I've gotten fired by my own mother and been out of work. So, um, and, what, and what I did was completely turn my job search into a full-time job and, yeah. and probably more than a full-time job. I was probably working 80 hours a week trying to find the job. I was, I was stressing myself out. And then I found the job and I was like, I never enjoyed any of that time. Mm -hmm. that, that extra capacity that I had with my family, with anybody, even networking with friends and going to have lunch with them or whatever, just spending that time kind of giving back to other people. It, it's, you know, it's going to take time to find a job. You're not going to lose a job or be out of a job. And then like five days later, find your next job, especially the higher professional you are, the longer it takes. And so you kind of have to realize to say, Hey, if I'm a, a manager level, director level, I probably have three or four months that this is going to take, right? To fill, yeah. find this job, fill this job, sometimes even longer. If I'm a VP or above, I've heard people give um, estimates that sometimes it's nine months to a year between wow. jobs, right? To find that next job. And so to really kind of pace yourself and understand, like, this is a process I'm going to go through. And also um, understand that almost everybody else has gone through this process as well. Yeah. And so that they understand, right? But you better have an explanation of why did I leave this job? What am I looking for next? All of that. To me, I think those are the three things that I would focus on. And thank you, Tim, for those great tips. And I hope the audience will uh, listen to what tips you gave and uh, apply in their job search. And with that, uh, my interview with you, Tim, comes to an, again, to an end. Again, thank you for taking the time to ask you the questions. Uh, and for the audience, if you have any other questions that you would like to ask me or Tim, 
please leave it in the comment section. Reach out to our social media networks. We are here to help everyone and to, uh, share the video so that other people will benefit from Tim's experience. And tune in next week for another question uh, for another interview uh, with me. And Tim, thank you again, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye, everyone.